Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, let me first ask you about this meeting coming up in Jeddah in a couple of days. You're going to meet with OPEC partners and non-OPEC partners. And the question everyone wants to know the answer to is whether or not the production cuts will remain in place through the end of 2018 and possibly even go into the future. What would the United Arab Emirates like to see? Well, first of all, it's an important meeting, and this is the Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee. It's a committee uh, that is formed, uh, chaired by uh, by His Excellency Khalid al-Fala from Saudi Arabia and co-chaired by uh, the Russian Minister uh, Alexander Novak. The importance of this meeting is to tell to tell the market what what is the compliance levels, because they are monitoring all of the compliance levels from the different countries, and they are very... As a committee, I would uh, uh, say that they are very serious when someone is not complying. They'll send letters. They will even call ministers to, uh, to comment why the country is not complying. So that is one part of the meeting. The second part of the meeting, they'll report as well uh, OPEC view uh, and an OPEC view of uh, how much this deal have contributed to balancing the market how much uh, of the oversupply is still there, uh, so how, in, in, in one sense, how much of this job has been completed and what is the remaining. Uh, this meeting is happening prior to the June meeting for OPEC and non-OPEC, uh, and we have the conference this year, so there will be a, a big crowd from the IOCs uh, and the other ministers. We are expecting it to be grand uh, with, with more countries coming. Hopefully, we can attract more countries to join this this group uh, of uh, of OPEC and non OPEC. The deal is 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 for a full year, and that has been already decided. So we're not discussing uh, the 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 deal. The deal is for the full year. We think it's needed for the full year. The deal has worked out quite well. You've got Brent crude prices up to seventy two and change. WTI is approaching sixty eight. Um, Everyone is complying fairly well, and even uh, some economies, like the petroeconomy in Venezuela, has collapsed. It's possible that President Trump might um, take the, wa the uh, waivers out uh, from Iran and reduce their contribution. Would the other OPEC members then fill in the gaps if that happens? I think that's go that's what's going to be to be discussed when when uh, when all of the ministers meet. Uh, the uh, you're right. We are over over complying. I think. Uh, whenever we have an, a market that is oversupplied, we need to focus on finishing the job first. Then what to do after that would require a meeting with everyone. But history told us that uh, OPEC and uh, have been, uh, as, as a group, have been resilient in, in meeting its, uh, its contribution to, uh, to, the, uh, to the supply side of the, of the demand of the world. So hopefully... Uh, we will be uh, building more capacities. And so some of the countries are already uh, embarking or, or have uh, finished most of the work on building additional capacity to provide that buffer uh, of, of uh, a potential uh, supply or additional supply when needed. Saudi Arabia has that. We all know it. UAE is building uh, the, the, capacity, uh, the capacity to 3.5 million barrels. Kuwait is spending as well in building their capacity. So historically, the Gulf, the Arabian Gulf states, have been always there uh, when uh, when needed to uh, to step in. But I think prior to thinking of that of, of of that problem, we need first to balance the market, and that's that's what we have in front of us uh, today. Some some analysts are even talking about an overbalanced market at this point. And when you look at, say, the uh, crude oil chart over the last 12 years, you see a series of peaks that then collapse. Um, at what point do you start to feel uncomfortable about the oil price? Is it $80? Is it $90? At what point do you start to worry? What worries me is not the price, to tell you the truth. What worries all of us is the lack of investment. During the 2015 and 2016, if you look at the level of investment that was not invested and was meant to be invested, you look at 30 to 25 to 30 percent reduction in each one of those years. So if you combine the numbers, you come up with a staggering number of an investment that was supposed to come to the, to the, to the, to the market. Now, 
we understand that the shale oil production came, but I don't think the shale oil production can substitute the, the world demand increase that we have seen, plus the reservoirs decline, the natural decline in the reservoirs, which adds to about four to five million every year. So there is, there is a gap coming if we don't invest. We have seen signs of, uh, of some investments coming to the market, but I can tell you that my biggest worry is not the price, it's that status of, of, of investments that if we didn't have, we will definitely have a problem in the, down the road.